The Courseware in Context, or Quick Framework, which is now entering its third year in development, is a set of evaluation tools intended to help an increasingly broad range of educational stakeholders make informed decisions about selecting and adopting courseware. The project's advisory committee rotates membership every year to bring in fresh perspectives and new energy as this ambitious project finds its way forward. At the 2017 WCET conference, we heard both outgoing and incoming advisory committee members reflect on the road ahead and on how to evaluate the project's progress. So I think currently, we, because this has just happened so foundationally, we, we're really starting to level set in terms of what we know that you know that's out there in terms of the use cases. I think we've never, we haven't at this point started to touch on the, the importance of how useful has, the, has the, the quick framework been in each use case. And then going a little step further and thinking about the fidelity of the implementation. So, you know, that's an additional component. So we could, you know, just throw the quick framework to everyone and say, hey, use it as you, as you see fit. But really starting to be able to chronicle and, and to articulate what, you know, how it's been used, what has been the implementation strategy, um, and really thinking through how useful have you found it and in what areas and what ways. Um, I think that's going to be really pivotal. Uh, I'm very excited about this year's advisory group. Uh, there are some folks who have now come on that did not experience, I, I wasn't around in year one, so we got to clean up some of the stuff from the first advisory group. This advisory group is cleaning up some things from last year, which I was a part of. And it's really nice to see um, how you take the validation work, but apply implementation to it. Uh, you'll speak to Tanya Justin a little bit later and she's phenomenal, she's a firecracker, but she also says over and over again, we know that implementation is not scalable today. There are so many implementation flaws that every school makes over and over and over again. And she's excited about and is pushing as rightly so, taking what we've done in terms of validating the tool and then adding to that implementation effective practices so that somebody can actually come along and say, here's how this school did it, I can do it that way, or mostly that way, and not make the mistakes that they made. And we can, we can build on the ability to roll some of this stuff out quicker and more intentionally in a way that actually does help students. So there's, we're taking away, hopefully, some of the learning curve. Well, I think that um, the group, you know, the folks that are working on the quick framework and the group, they have lots of different expertise and experience. And I think, first of all, we have lots of research and knowledge in the field about what actually works in implementing technology in general in organizations. You know, there's companies and organizations all over the world that are implementing technology and sometimes quite successfully to meet whatever outcomes that they want. And I think that we need to look at some of those frameworks, and we are thinking about those more. You know, what sort of is the life cycle to adopting technologies and scaling them? And so, and, and that really helps us identify some of the key variables. And lots of us um, on the executive committee, we've been doing this for a long time. So when we talk about implementation, we know faculty engagement matters. How are we motivating, incentivizing the faculty? Are we training them and helping them develop and using the technology? That's just like one example of a variable when we're talking about implementation that's important. You know, How are we supporting students in the use of this technology? So I think in thinking about the phases of of technology adoption and scaling technology, you know, from building awareness to selecting the technology to then implementing the technology and, and, and you know, and going to diffusion and scale. So we're moving sort of understanding the phases and what pieces of the quick framework are important into what phases and then looking at who are the different people or stakeholders, what are the different activities that are going to lead to success and at the end of the day, you know, how do we make sure the right technologies are in the right place solving the right problem so then they can scale. If you don't have all of those million variables in place in the beginning, you know, scale becomes impossible, so. The group is keenly aware that Quick's ultimate success may be best judged by the community of practice that they hope the project will enable. Um, you know, I think that we so often in, in our space in terms of, you know, being engaged in conversations at places like WCET or OLC or EDUCAUSE, those are the natural homes and fits for this digital courseware and context kind of conversation. 
But what about other teaching learning organizations like Pod, right? So there are a lot of teaching and learning professionals that are out here that have no idea about you know, the movement and how we start to, to, to build capacity around that. And so I would love to be able to see additional partnerships, alignment, you know, really being able to open access and awareness of, of the use cases we've created and really start to build a community of practice around the work. I don't know if it's who signs up to do work as much as it is who's utilizing the tool and writing about it potentially in the work that, that's occurring at their campus already, right? So I think plugging it as an add-on is not necessarily the goal here. So to me, in five years, it's it becomes a reference point as a part of additional you know, peer-reviewed literature around courseware in general. That's something we grapple with in terms of common language nomenclature. Do we have the data to support that these different approaches work? The other benefit of it is that it's not just about choosing a particular product and determining if it's working for that particular context, but then again, the implementation and how effective that implementation is, in and of itself, that's, that's really a ripe area for additional literature, whether it's faculty development, other support staff, those pieces, and then what does that look like in terms of impact? So ultimately, what did that mean for that particular institution? And I think if we start to see that infiltrate some of the literature from a peer review perspective, um, then you're talking about sustainability in a very different way than just, this is this tool you can go to, here's this framework, here's this interactive, slick interface, and instead, looking at it in terms of, no, this is part and parcel to when you are defining a particular courseware need at your institution, it, it becomes the preeminent, this is the place that we at least start or engage so that we're all on the same page.